send the resources to everybody present here. Let's say it in four hours later after the meeting, right? So yeah, so just pay attention to what is about to be said to you right now, right? So I believe I believe that everybody here are aspiring to become a UX designer, right? That's a good thing, yeah. And it takes a lot of practice, a lot of practice, a lot of pra practice to become to become good, right? To become better, right? To increase your actual value in the UX industry, it requires a lot of practice. Right, so everything that we will do today, I would enable everybody to, after the lecture, to go and practice it on your own, right? So, background of me, my name is Timothy Exodus. I'm a UX design specialist and a brand identity designer, right? So, I work for companies remotely. I work for a company in Texas and I work for a company in Lagos financial company in Lagos. Uh, I think you might be familiar with them. Um, Credit Direct, right? So, yeah, that's basically me. I started as a brand identity designer, transition to software engineering. I was still drawn to designing of stuff, right? I, I now went to UX design. And so it's now a full package for me kind of thing. But I do not write codes anymore. I hate writing codes. It's something I really was never passionate about. But I did explore the option. And so the plus this the fact that I know how code work, right? So with all of that being said, let's get started, right? Okay. Uh, is everybody still here? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yeah, we yeah. are. All right. Good. Good. I'm going to share my screen and then we get started. How do I share my screen? I'm not, I'm not really familiar with Teams. Once in a while, I use the software, but yeah, I shared my screen. Okay. I think I might have to share it again. So can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, we can. So at any point you cannot hear me, I would love you to draw my attention. Right? So yeah, something of that sort. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can, we can. All right, all right, all right, good. All right, so I'm just only going to spend like, let's say, give or take 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, because I'm not going to be saying so much. Right? I just want you to see things from the practical, from the practical aspect, right? I'm more practical than anything. I'm not against theory, I love theory, but, Theory is not relevant when it's not practicalized, right? So now we're talking about visual communication here. So I just put together this stuff here to better explain what we'll be talking about, right? So we'll be talking about three things, right? I'm away. Um, I, I'm sure you guys are aware what that is. A hierarchy. Um, illustration and spacing right i think i'm going to speak more on um on hierarchy visual hierarchy then we'll just you know rally around the two others yeah so now i i, I like did this stuff right really quick this evening so see how i can communicate this thing to you really clear there's so many people here. I would give you this contest, right? This contest, you write up here and tell you to produce something for me. 
and describe something as this, right? And you might not be able to give me something exactly to that, right? So now the reason is not because you are, it's not because of anything, it's because you do not really understand the right principles to apply to get those things done, right? It's that simple. You do not understand the right principle to apply, right? So now, I'll tell you this, that, of course, we all know what visual communication is. It's, it's written there. That's why I did this stuff, so I can just read it out for you, and you understand why seeing this stuff practically, right? So visual communication is a way to present idea in a graphical manner, giving more meaning to the message. So graphical, right? When we say graphical, we're talking about kind of like something in a, that, that is, it's combination of different elements. We're talking about you making use of text, making use of images, making use of illustrations, right? to be able to add more meaning or give more meaning to a message to what you're trying to pass to an audience, right? So basically, that's it. So we're talking about, firstly, hierarchy. Hierarchy. OK, so what is hierarchy? A visual hierarchy is used to rank design elements and influence. It's used to rank design elements and influence in the order you want the user to view them by using principles like contrast, scale, balance, and so on and so forth. Right? There's proximity, there is um there's proximity, there is what do you call it? Perspective. Right, there's so many, there's so many ways. There's alignment. Excuse me, sir. Can you hear me? Excuse me, sir. Please, you cannot see your screen. Shit. How is can, you, can you share your screen so we can see? How is that even possible? What happened? You can just oh. reshare your screen. Oh, God. Okay. Okay, we can see it now. We can see it now. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so we spoke about visual communication being a way to present an idea in a graphical manner to give more meaning to a message, right? And I speak of it that graphical um, visual communication is you being able to leverage on image, text, right, illustration to add more meaning or to be able to present a message or to communicate a message to an audience. It's that simple, right? Visual communication is a language, right? The language. Now, it's simple communicating, but visually. That's what it is. OK. So now, like what you can see here is that you are seeing me making use of text, leveraging on text, right? to communicate something to you, right? So yeah, basically that's what visual communication is. And you can see the color I used, black and white. This is me trying to reinforce something that is elegant, right? So you can get it. You can see my contrast are right. You are not straining your eyes to see anything. It's clear enough. Visual communication is always to be clear. So that visual communication has functioned is the fact that your communication has to be clear enough, it has to be understandable, right? It has to tell a story, right? It has to be uncomplicated. By all means, I think it ends up to me saying that it has to be clear, right? So yes, that's what visual communication is. You should be able to use illustrations, iconography, right, typography, all of these things to reinforce a statement, to be able to make a user feel a certain way. 
okay um i really don't want to go as deep but yeah that's what visual communication is okay and i tell you interact with it every day from your whatsapp to the poster you see while working to the billboards to the tv adverts you see to almost everything to facebook to anything digital visual communication is in action right so yes visual communication applies to our everyday to day life and it is understanding that and the, the the reason you are here is that you want to make it easier for people to so you want to make it easier to communicate things to people visually so and for that to happen you need to understand that there are principles that you need to put in action to make those things work right like what we are going to be covering today we're talking about hierarchy we're talking about spacing and we're talking about what do you call it hierarchy spacing and what's the what's the other one Please follow me. Hello. Hello. We are with you. We are with you. We are with you. All right. So, okay. So, um, so talking about hierarchy, illustration, and spacing, right? So we we'll just move along, yes. and I will just illustration and spacing. Fast. Yes. So now what you can see for a start here, what you can see at work in what's just in this hero section here is that there is spacing at work, there is hierarchy at work, and there is not necessarily illustration, but there's a part where you see illustration at work, right? So yes. Now, what is hierarchy, right? Let's dive into that and let's just get that out, right? So hierarchy, is used to rank design elements and influence in order um, in the order you want, right? It's used to rank design elements and influence in the order you want to view them by using principles like contrast, balance, and so on and so forth. So you can help establish each element in its rightful place and help the most important element stand out. I think this definition is quite clear, right? So I'll tell you how this stuff work. So yeah, we're eventually going to be looking at contrast and scale, maybe proximity and balance. Yeah, but mostly contrast and scale, right? So now, how will it feel, right? If I should, sorry, let me have a duplicate of this. So remember, it's practical, guys. So just bear with me and pay attention. This Figma, this Figma. I, I, I think I, I, I think you guys have done like introduction to Figma, but this is me using Figma, right? And you, I want to, I want to do something for you so you see how it feels, right? So I have this, and I have this text here, right? So now, check this out. I make this what? size 96 let me give you the same font right give you the same color right okay so let's say let me bold and let's say on the five percent right that's my spacing yes okay now i have this okay and this is this so now this is to clearly show that this stuff does not have any sense of hierarchy, right? Okay, because I should not know which text is more important than the other, right? I'm just staring at straight up text. There is no, there is no ranking to this because they are the same size, the same color, the same spacing, right? So something of that sort. So hierarchy comes to establish order hierarchy comes to establish order right so now if i should come here 
and display this. See these two texts, this and this, which is better, which is more appealing, which of them communicates to you better. By all means, it's this guy here, because my priorities are clear. I want you to see visual communication. Then I want you to see the write-up that supports that, then followed by the button that says learn more. All right. So when designing, pay attention to your scaling. So yeah, let's jump into the principles that help that help get the some principles to help um to help structure the principles that helps you influence i would say visual hierarchy that helps your visual hierarchy better to be better all right so now let, let's look at it this way so we all know what visual hierarchy is right it's used to rank design elements right and influence them in order you want users to view them right and we saw that in action here right you can see how big this is followed by this small text to support this because I want you to see this first, then followed by this, then that, then this. So by all means, I, I need to make my, I need to put scaling in action, principle of scaling in action. I, I need to put principle of contrast in action. Regardless, I even scaled this stuff. I, it's, it's not even still pure white. So if you look at it clearly, you see that this is not even a white. It's, 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 it's color code, right? So yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, we can hear you. Sorry, give me a few seconds. yes um yeah i'm back sorry about that okay so yeah if you look at this it's not even white i'm talking about it it it's color code here hexadecimal code right that gives it this kind of like gray feeling because i wanted to really mute it and do not place so much priority on it right? if i should make this white the visual appealing would drop to a sense Talking about all that here, everything needs to be at work, right? So all of these details is what really makes your design better, right? So okay, things we are do, doing practical. Maybe I'll just take it into um into a side project of mine to really get you seeing what is going on, right? So yeah, so I really want to be able to communicate this thing stop with you so you can really get all that i am explaining yes so yeah that's with that right so still re-emphasizing on that scale and contrast so the importance of visual hierarchy is clear right taking you back to the notes Visual hierarchy can play a key role in, in the planning of your information architecture to help users navigate through your product easier, easily. This can drastically reduce the amount of efforts needed to engage with your products. UX design is all about removing friction and enhancing usability for a product. And paying attention to visual hierarchy is a key way to do this. So some of those principles are number one. Number one is using size and scale to pull focus, right? So we clearly have seen that at work from here, right? To pull focus. You can't tell me somebody will just come here and the first thing they would see is this guy. Nah, never. This is the biggest. He would see this first. 
then maybe read this to get to get a better understanding of what this really is that's how the brain works right so yeah use size and scale to pull focus so clearly this illustration is describing that yeah skills other way you get to see the phone first then the human then the other way the human first then the phone first it's simple right so sizing basically is see it's not just it's not just important it is necessary right that you give elements that are more important and has more priority you make them bigger right and that's not just the only way to get hierarchy we've explored that you can use color too we get to that right we get to that right so you really want to be careful on how you enlarge your elements right so you do not want to feed users brain with too many information allow we flow allow we flow right so next number two using color and contrast to make your object stand out it's clear here it's clear i do not even need to explain anything you get the gist all right you get the gist so yeah proximity of elements what does this mean this is simple how close the elements are together to determine how related they are as it starts right so yes, if I want to strike visual hierarchies and extent, proximity has a big role to play in it, right? So if I should put these two stuff on the same line, right? It really might create this offset for you too, which is really important. But yeah, of course, you can break. And the thing is that when you know the rules, when you know all the principles, you know how to break them, right? It will shock you that since I already know that scaling and contrast can cause visual hierarchy to be outstanding, I can apply that and, have, and maybe leave proximity alone and still get something really nice, right? So really, it's how much you understand this principle that matters. So I can do this and see even, and turn on my grid, and even put this text here, right? And play this prototype for you, and it still works. It does not necessarily have to be under. I, I, in traditional, um, like, what, what would I even say? Um, normal designs would always put it here. But I've explored so many designs for clients, right? I deliver so many designs for clients that they are not comfortable with normal, right? And the thing is that the brain, okay, being a creative designer, so I've learned this thing on how to break principles and how to shift this and how to make it work. So the brain does not always notice normal, right? When you when you are able to play with visual hierarchy, like you can make this stuff outstanding, you can play with your scaling, you can play with your contrast, and the brain gets this different feeling it's outstanding that's why you will see i don't even know i don't know if you know billard these guys their designers really understand how how visual hierarchy work because they, they do it a lot you just want big text from nowhere or one big image from nowhere with one small text supporting it so basically the image will get your attention and you'll be forced to read that small text to know what the image is talking about so it's not just Bilal, so many other companies are doing this stuff. You check Apple websites, you see that they are big phone, and you don't see one small text beneath it. Yeah? So yes. So you really want to do that. You cannot just be there, right? So you need to know how to, how to make your visual hierarchy work, right? So yes. So proximity of elements, we already did that. So that's that and that's that. Right, so we explore illustration and spacing. I don't think we need to explore spacing because we really know what that is already. I'm not going to be giving so much theory on that, but I'm just going to tell you this, right? So spacing works in different ways. You see this text here, look at it, look at it here. 
this, this the text is appealing this way. If I should change this stuff from 150% to 100%, see what happens. So spacing by all means contributes to text. It's your paragraph text, yes, you do not want to get that wrong. You get that wrong, you stress users, you stress them out, right? So you really want to have negative space. Now, the thing is that I always have my grid on point. You see the space in my margin here? You see my margin flowing from here, from right to left? You see my spacing flowing between texts? And the thing, the trick with spacing is that you really want to be consistent. I was not completely consistent with this. But yes, you want to be consistent. I normally would go with, um, okay, there are different ways you can scale your text. There is the eight. Is it, in fact, it goes down to two, right? Then to four, then to eight, then to 16, then to 24, then to 32. That's high, depending on, depending on the platform. Depending on the platform, right? So that's really what it is. So you want to be consistent with your grid. You don't want to be mixing odd numbers and equal numbers, no, be consistent. So if you are going with two, you want to be incrementing by two always. If you are going to going with four, you want to be incrementing with four always. And, but the thing is that you you understand the principle already. There are times where you get increments by something lower than that just to make sure it's usually appealing. You can always break the rules, right? But yeah, this is a good start for you to be able to create an orderly design. Yes, so yeah, that's basically what it is. So if I should take you to this design, all right, okay, I won't open this. Yeah, so just bear with me. Are, do we, are, are we still here? Hello, are we still here? Yes, yes, I will, yeah. Okay, okay. Now, speaking of, yes, yeah, speaking of visual hierarchy, what do you think about what you see? It's clear, it's straight to the point. Nobody is fighting with anybody. Right. I'm even beginning to learn now that the visual hierarchy here is not even sufficient enough. Oh, well, yeah, this is an example of what I'm talking about. See the navigation, it's not as big. See the logo, see the icons here. Right. I should scroll down, get to see what I'm really talking about. See my big about us text. See my image here. See my text here. My button and my image to support it. Right? So you see? So you see what's happening here? So this is like a side project I'm working on. I'm just like, I'm just still exploring. So you get an idea of how this thing really works. Right? So yes, you want to be careful how you scale. So I'll show you this too. Let's see how it looks like. Yeah, I think I'm pretty like explaining a lot of stuff here right now. Yep. So you see this? You see this? How big the image is. And followed by the text. So many powerful things you can do with visual hierarchy. Make your designs beautiful, bro. Make your design it's beautiful. So just understand how to scale. Now there are so many ways you can scale. I know people want this one-time formula you can use to scale and you feel fine and okay that kind of thing. Yeah, there's not really that one formula you can do. So normally what I would do is, I just explain it to you. You can you can you can scale using a grid method, right? So this is how I, I do it really. So let me give an example, right? So this text here is like let's say 40. I would say the supporting text here, the body text should be a base 20. Yeah, it could be 16. All right, it could be 16, it could be 20. It depends on it depends on how what you are trying to, it depends on your priority. If your priority is legibility over like make sure that make sure that when you are dealing with headings and you're dealing with actual text, it's like it's like your your paragraph text is like is like or your heading is like two third or three 
or three times bigger than larger than your text. So I'm only on. Um, I'm, I'm not articulating myself as I should for that kind of thing. So what I would do if I'm scaling my images or my element is let's do this. Let's say I want this guy here, and I say okay my, my grid my scaling method is eight i will do eight times um three or four let's say four or five let's do four right so what i will do is i do i'll, I'll keep on doing 32 plus eight plus eight plus eight plus eight until i really get what i want if i do not get it i just do plus eight that's how figma works you can actually plus it right plus it that is that you can even divide it as well as in you can minus it right you can see i have this at 72 and i just want this one to be what 32. It works for me all the time so you can implement the same thing here so in terms of in terms of um scaling text i recommend the website for you called type scale and check it out. I most likely will add it to my resources. Type scale, right? You get to realize that there's a base to your scaling. I can say I want to be scaling my text based on 1.5 or based on 1.3. And any text I scale is one point something times anything I want it to be. So of course you need to set your base first. In this case, my base is 20. Right? Our base is 20, and you can really just scale by Let's say I choose to scale by 1.5. I can say 20 by 1.3. I keep on doing this until I set my design system. So what I do normally is that before now, how I make my visual hierarchy to be really sufficient for me or to be really effective for me is that before any project, I scale my text back to back. I create this typography system that scales my text. I already know the, head, the heading size of my text. I already know the heading two, I already know the heading three. So this is like also be a masterclass. I'm just touching everywhere in relating to scaling. So yes, by all means, we want to do this. And dealing with elements, look at that elements very well. Know your, set your priority. Know which one you want to be big. Know which one you want to enter to be muted in the background. I really want to show you other stuff, but this lecture is being recorded. Right? So I do not want to bridge. I do not want to bridge um, NDA, but this one, I, I'm not currently having NDA, but so you can see the way this one works. Talking about visual communication here, yeah, talking about hierarchy. Hierarchy has to do with contrast. What do we say contrast is? Contrast is how, 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 when I say vibrant your element is or how subtle it is, giving the other guy <laughs> or the other element a room to shine or not to shine right so that's really what contrast is so if you can see these elements here hovering in the background that illustration here the thing is that there's so much hierarchy working here and that stuff sort of there is being influenced by the principle of contrast in visual hierarchy because it's really muted in the background it's not a priority i want it there just to support every other thing at the front talking about what color Still contrast. Look at this text here called technology. You see how shiny it is. I think I posted this up on Twitter and I got like what 12,000 views. So yes, this is contrast at work. See my other text here to support this. If I scale, you see text, big text, smaller text, smaller text, big image, right? Big text, smaller text, right? Balance. You see the there's something called balance in layouting. It still applies to visual hierarchy. Important, right? Flows, right? So we have this here. See what I skilled, I blew this up. I made this brighter. Integrity, that's like what I'm really trying to say. Integrity, right? So yes, you see, hover helps on click, contrast kind of thing. Yeah. So by all means, so con I, I think you pretty much understand how this stuff works, right? So speaking of illustration, 
So there are different levels of illustration. I think I'll just touch that and close. Right? We're already spending too much time. Sorry for wasting your time, but yeah. So speaking of illustration, I would just say there are two different types of illustrations, right? There's normal illustrations like the vector. Okay, I will not really say vector. Vector illustrations and other illustrations are still the same illustration. But of course, illustration is basically you trying to visually enhance something using illustration that communicates an idea in an actual realm. Like, okay, like trying to convert an object, an actual object. Okay, for example, we have, I, I don't really know how to explain this. Okay, I, I was I was hoping to just, you know, speak from my opinion and stuff. So we can see this stuff here, this illustration we have here, it's clearly saying, it's clearly communicating the idea of the, sorry, let me turn off the grid. Yeah, so it's clearly communicating this stuff here, the text here. So illustration by all means is supposed to have meaning and supposed to be able to so, so to communicate something of meaning to somebody right a different kind of illustration we have this kind of illustration where you get to um draw something in its literal form but more of like being um more animated kind of look yeah and then we have something called iconography you might be familiar with that where you use icons to communicate stuff right we would normally would see those being we normally would see check out kind of cats like you know these actual cats you drive right so all of those things basically is you trying to use icons to communicate things the way it should be, right? Yeah. So if you understand that, you should know that even illustration themselves, hierarchy applies to them and spacing applies to them. That's why you see that these illustrations are not too big, the spacing between them are adequate and they're functional. Yes. So yeah, for, for, for forgive my um stammering. Yeah, it's not. I'm just a little bit nervous at this point and kind of like pressured in a way. Yeah, but I think basically that's what I got. That's what I got to say about this thing. So you know that there are icons and there are actual illustrations. Yeah, I, I, I would show you a particular project where I used actual illustrations. But I think you get it just, yeah. So basically that's it from my end. That's it from my end. I, I kind of like wanted this stuff to be more formal than even informal. Uh, more informal, sorry, than formal. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm a fun person, right? So I like to work in a creative and fun environment, kind of thing. Yeah, but basically, I think that's what I have. Every note will be communicated to you in due time, right? So really, that's that's the end for me. That's the end for me. Yeah. So if you have any question, by all means, yeah, ask me now, because I'm going to be asking you a couple of questions and for you to just, you know, tell me one or two things I need to, to validate the fact that you've been listening to me and your next design will be better. And I would not see you clashing your text up and down and not scaling it properly, all right? So if I have any question, I'm listening to so address it right on spot. Mr. Bobby, please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mr. Michael. I want to thank you very much for this this section. Like, um, I was I, I I happened to learn so many so many things from this um, training section. Um, Good to hear that. Yeah, and I'm very I'm very much grateful for the um, organizers uh, for of this um, forum and those that made it possible. Also, I want to ask about um, the illustrations. You talked about we um, designing or creating our own illustrations. How about we, uh, is there any place we can get illustrations from? Or um, Because usually, I, I usually get illustrations from, um, I, I usually get illustrations from some um, places like, I, right. I'm all this icon, icon eight and the rest. So, I want to know more about that. Okay, you can get resources from. So, okay, of course, I, 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 I uh, you're familiar with the term freemium and premium, right? So, yes, there are, yeah, I, I think at this point I get to share my screen. 
No, not necessarily. Yeah, so there are different places you can get illustration from, right? There is um, free peak. You can get actual vector illustrations there for free. I think you are limited until you are able to subscribe to their stuff, right? That that that's that there there is a what do you call it? What do you call it? Um, I'm coming. Sorry, let me fetch my resources. I think I had a list of that thing. Uh, all right. So yeah, we have. I think you're familiar with on draw. Illustrations there are pretty free of charge. On draw. Dot co. Draw kids to dot io free of charge, right? So yes, um, humans free of charge. And if you should check your, so I'll share my screen again. So I'll, like make this stuff easier for you. So how I get my icons, so I'll give you like, give you like inside my Figma, how it looks like, <laughs> how I do my stuff, how I get my illustration. So I think I would do, um, there is, what do you call it? I use iconly for my icon package. It's not; it's still upcoming. They, they, they do not have so much there yet, right? It's kind of like a modern icon manager. Gives you different style. It gives you field. It gives you outline, right? It gives you bulk, different shades. Gives you broken. It gives you two toned and gives you curved, basically. I use Iconly. If I want to search for deeper icons that are not mentioned there, I go for Iconify. Now, Iconify clearly has, the reason I find this really vast is because it has several icon collections here, Self, several, what's the word, different authors here, different icon managers here, or icon package here. You can see material symbol, you can see material, Google material icons, you can see phosphor, you can see remix icon, you can see carbon. I think we're familiar with carbon design system, something you should explore. I can see I, ant design icon, I think they also have a design system. And see clarity. So yeah, so many icons are here, they are limitless. I'm not sure there's almost anything you cannot find here. Speaking of illustration, I think I do more subscription or subscription based kind of illustration. So I think I will subscribe in um, icons. Um, I, uh, what do you call it? I think I use uh, what was the word? It's more of icon eight and icon scout. I find icon scout illustration really quality. So yes, you can check check out icon scout. Yes. And you can check out, you can subscribe to free pick. I think things the resources they are endless, basically. So yeah, I think I do more of that. But the thing is that there are times where you might want to do custom, where you get to just, you know, put your your creativity to test and you put stuff together, right? Talking about a verified icon, you really in, you might get this online, I do not know, but yeah, you might want to do something like this and what increase the size, right? You get what you can call an icon here to complement it. Let's say check, right? So yeah, you might want to increase the increase the size, bring in the middle. So yeah. The, I think you can be creative sometimes. So it does not really have to be all kind of thing. If you want to, you can add a fair a shadow, infuse it in, give it more realistic feeling, increase to whatever you want to do. So yes, it does that answer your question. I think I'm already even talking too much. Hello, does that answer your question? Bobby, are you here? Yes, I am. Um, I think right. I think we can get that now. Right, Any other question from anybody? So I address it and we all go.
Ozil, please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much for the lesson. Um, is there a possibility of using an Android point to actually work on this stuff like this? You can use an Android phone to study and research and watch videos, right? But I would not advise you use an Android phone to do the work, right? Because it gets really uncomfortable for you, really, really uncomfortable for you. And you it requires a little bit of processor power for you to be able to run software like Figma and Adobe XD and Vision and so on and so forth. So I would not I would not advise that. But I normally use my Android phone. So um I what do you call it? What do you call it? Simulate a mobile view experience of a sort. Yes. So yeah, I, I would not I do I would not recommend that. I don't even think it is possible. If I thought it is possible, it would discomfort you. So no, I think it's a no for me. But yes, with all the principles you've heard so far, you can use software like Canva and whatnot to experiment it. So yes, you can use an Android phone, right? But until you make plans and get your laptop and you really want to do UX design, you get on with it. But you can use this stuff to experiment on graphics and stuff like that. Everything I have taught today is applicable in every sphere of design. Everything I have taught today. So it's a yes and no for me. UX design is a no. Actual design, graphics, using Canva and other softwares, yes. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is there any other question? Hello, anybody? Dolapo, Yunis, Ketcha, Divine, Ozil, Prince, Sylvester. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Yeah, um, I really don't have a question. Um, do I want to thank you for the lecture for today and the, the, the organizers of this lecture? They, they really done well, and you as well. Uh, the lesson was explicit. You really touched some sides where I was having issues, and I don't think I have a question. Well, um, when you started, you said uh, you were going to ask us a question. So I don't know, maybe that could help us. Help us. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Divine. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I was able to help you. Right. Anyway, Jeta. Any question before I throw out my own question? So yes, the question I'm about to ask now is going to, I'm, I'm thinking making the question more practical, but it's going to attract like data, a lot of data, a lot of data, money for you kind of thing. Yeah. So should I make it practical or theory, which is it? Which would you prefer? I think it's too early for practical, yeah? Right. I don't know if I can suggest. Suggest, let me hear. Okay, maybe you could um make it both. Um if it is too tedious for us, maybe the organizers can decide maybe we'll do a practical or theoretical. Uh all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So yeah, so, okay. I'm going to That's show you. Sir, please, can I suggest? Please suggest. Okay, please. Um, I want to suggest that um, a practical should be um, given um, in, like a, something we can be using to practice before the next session. 
I think the next session is um, very, very practical. So we can lay our hands on some things based on what you have taught us today. And then we're going to prepare for the next section. I'm going to show you a design. And I'm going to expect you to tell me two things that is wrong in that design. Right? So I'm going to show this design. I'll, and the best answers I get. So this is design really. There is no really, there's no one for me that's answering the particular question. Or am I a lecturer or what? <laughs> so there's no marking scheme. Marking scheme is my standard and to what I feel is right and would be good for my users kind of thing, right? So I'll do um, bringing up, bringing up tech clients, right? Now we will have, okay. so I, I, I want to round off. I think they're already even giving me time off for, yeah. So, so I would, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm cooking up something now. I think you really want to get ready for it. Yeah. Now, right. So see this design here. <clears throat> Can you see my screen? No, no. No, sir. It's so lengthy. Yeah. I think I think it's like the easiest question ever. Is the question ever? I first to raise his or hand to get to answer the question, then move to the next and to the next. So you see this? What's wrong with this composition? This design composition. Hmm. Divine, give it a shot. Yeah, hello, Divine. Give me a shot. Give me a shot. What? Yeah, yeah. The color, the contrast. Okay. All right. What else? That all. Can you bring the screen again? Is the screen not there? No. Mm -hmm. No, no. Okay, there. Yeah, so you have it. <clears throat> All right, that, 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 a, that a time of uh, Mr. Prince, give you a shot. Prince. Well, I think um, the contact and the screening are not where I blind. Okay, so what, what would you suggest I do? Um, I think we are going to bring up, we are going to bring the bring up um text down. So I are going to make the cartooning match up with the text space to make it all look more presentable. I can't really hear you clearly. That's a minus because of your background. But I think you're heading somewhere. You're hitting the nail in the head. Yeah. So, okay. Yes. Sylvester, so give me a shot. Okay, I think uh, it's the, just the issue of the use of space. Uh, 
when you divide the screen um, horizontally into two, the tech space is uh, a bit uh, lower compared to the Bring Up Tech Giant, which is uh, well spaced. So uh, maybe I'll move the tech space uh, on top, uh, 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 some pixels on top. Okay. To make it centered, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Edit, give me a shot. Edit. Yeah, okay. I was thinking hierarchy. Hierarchy. Okay, I'm listening. So what, what would you suggest I do? No. Solve my problem. I'm thinking text space would be like the heading or something like that. I mean, that's what that's what we want our, our users to see first. So, so like maybe that should be bolder, and the fonts like the font size should be higher. Or yes, yeah, should be higher. Maybe like just like you were trying to explain the former one, like it should be like sixty. It should be like forty, and then this bringing up the bringing up tech giants should be like twenty or sixteen. I don't know. You don't know, Abby. Okay, that's nice. So let's just conclude that you do not know. You said it yourself. <laughs> but yeah, I get you. Nice one. Nice one. Um, Divine, you want to hit again? So your hand is refusing to come down. Uh, I didn't raise hand again, but... Oh, yeah, bring it down now. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Mr. Pri, anybody that's answered, bring your hand down. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Ozil, give you a shot. Okay. Um, I think the RIK, that and tech space, should be the like the heading because it said some principle of hierarchy which is um the size and the scale so mm -hmm. that text space should be like the heading why the bringing up seats take giants should be like what we want to read so i guess this the size and the scale of it is where the issue is all right prince how far you're good now see you don't go drop your hand down here you only want me for where i did yeah, everybody bring your hand down. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so clearly, for a start, the contrast is wrong. It's going to strain user eyes to see. Yeah, to make it brighter. You know, like British now, brighter, you kind of say. Yeah, so yeah, this one, all she said, edit. I don't know, I think it's edit, not all she. Edit and print, and then who? Ozil said, it's too big. Uh, first of all, I should close the space, right? So they can be really, like it can relate to each other, right? I should make it smaller kind of thing, right? Maybe not so small, but smaller. And I should also make the text pop. I normally would say, yeah, you change the typography, but I don't think I've taught you guys to that one. But you can use two um, serif fonts. It's not always advisable to use two serif fonts. You can use a serif and a sans serif. Serif fonts are fonts that have this edgy kind of thing. This edge, this kind of thing, right? A serif font. Sans serif does not have it. The word sans serif comes from the word without. Sans means without, right? So without this cliffs here, you can see the sharp cliffs here. So yeah, Roboto is a sans serif font and so on and so forth. So yes, something of this sort. You see how appealing it is now? looks way more appealing compared to before. You can do this in so many ways. I can even bring this up here, reduce the size, 
do this this way kind of thing. And it still makes sense to me. So don't limit yourself. People will see this, still see this text space first, but they'll just only to they only support it with this. You're breaking principles, but you're making it better. You're making it better in a discomforting way that makes them notice it. So yes, visibility matters a lot. And I think we um um I'll, I'll go for edits. You were you were you were quite clear and you were straight to the point. I like what you said. I'll go with um, Ozil, right? And then I'll go with either between Divine or Prince. But Prince, the thing is that you are not in a conducive environment. So that's like a minus for you, right? Don't worry, you're my guy. You're my guy. You're my guy. So I'll go with Divine. Yeah. So, Bobby, I'm, I'm picking Divine, Edit, and Ozil. Yeah. So I think everybody said, everybody that spoke here really said what it was, right? I'm looking at people who spoke more on it kind of thing. So everybody, nobody was wrong here, right? It's just about, and that's the thing you get when you are communicating with your stakeholders. For you to get more from them, you need to be able to communicate your process and your thinking to these things. So yeah, that this is like an opportunity for you to up your, um, how much eloquent you are in communicating your strategy and your thinking process. So by all means, this all, that's all for today. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Bobby, for having me. Thank you for organizing this stuff. I'm really happy that I got to be a part of this. And so Bobby, I would have you take over. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hi, good evening, everyone, once again. Okay, doing my introduction, I guess Mr. Timothy was not around then. So I'm the moderator for tonight, and I'd like to say you did justice to what you taught us. We are very happy, we are very grateful that you had you 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 taught us tonight. So for everybody that came for this meeting, we would like to appreciate you all and say a very big thank you you all for coming you all did very 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 well mr timas i can see your hand you want to say something okay the hand is lowered all right so no nah, no nah, sorry i was going to say something okay I'm taking away my win from you and i'm giving it to prince thank you yeah that's fine that's fine that's fine okay so thank Thank you everyone for coming and see you next week Saturday and be prepared as usual. Have a nice day and good night everyone. Good night, thank you. Good night. Good night, good night everyone.